When it comes to talk of great English strikers of the past, most of the chat revolves around players like Alan Shearer, Gary Lineker, Bobby Charlton, Ian Wright and Wayne Rooney, and quite rightly so. However, I'm of the opinion that there is an absolutely top class player who all too often gets left out of this conversation and I think that's a crying shame. I'm talking of course about the one and only Teddy Sheringham, a man who achieved legendary status at basically every club whose doors he walked through. A man who I believe is criminally underrated. George Sheringham is there! Oh, he's done it again! Teddy Sheringham completes his hat-trick, his third hat-trick of the season. Sheringham's glittering career was one which might have never happened, having failed to impress on trials at Spurs, Orient and Crystal Palace. As fate would have it, Teddy would play for non-league side Leighton and Ilford in a youth team game just before his 16th birthday, and go on to impress watching first team scout Bob Pearson enough to convince Millwall to sign him as an apprentice in 1982. Sheringham would have limited impact in his first early years at Millwall, often reduced to warming the bench due to, well let's call them creative differences with gaffer George Graham over sharing him's tendency to play with a Brazilian style flair. The man himself had this to say about those experiences. I was a flash kid in those days, a real showboater with a repertoire of all flicks and touches. I wasn't interested in scoring boring goals. They had to come from benders into the top corner or chipping the keeper or something. When they came off, they looked great. But the trouble was, they didn't come off too often. George Graham soon got hold of me and told me in no uncertain terms to cut out the fancy frills. He used to drum into me until I was so sick of it. I'm ashamed to say that I thought I knew best. But finally, George reached the limits of his patience and gave me a right roasting if I tried the classy shots at goal even in training. The other players told me the manager couldn't stand the sight of me. So conceited was I, I didn't appreciate that he was trying to teach me a valuable lesson. A dire loan spell to League 4 team Aldershot followed, which had the player questioning his life choices. It was good for me, I suppose, to have gone to Aldershot for a couple of months, but it was a trying interlude in which I played six games, scored not a solitary goal and got clattered from pillar to post in every one and I seriously began to doubt if I was going to make it in football. A move to Jure Gardens followed and this is where it all started to click for the young striker. On the field, I quickly came to understand that in being paid to win games for my team, I was playing not only for my livelihood but those of my teammates as well. For the first time, the importance of what George Graham had been telling me began to dawn on me. It truly didn't matter how you got the ball in the back of the net. Top scorer with 13 goals, Sheringham helped the Norwegian outfit gain promotion. Returning a changed man, he was an ever-present for the 86-87 season, also writing his name into the club's history for the first time by becoming the youngest ever player to score a hat-trick in a league game against Shrewsbury. From then on, he was a key player for the side, becoming the club's top scorer in all but one season from 86 to 91, with his 38 goals in all competitions during the 1991 season being his best ever haul for the club. Club. That was to be his last for Millwall as well, as he was sold to Nottingham Forest for £2 million in July 1991. He would only play a single season for them before being snapped up by Spurs, again for £2 million the following year at the age of 26. Teddy Sheringham collected Nick Barmby's pass and put it on a plate for Jurgen Klinsmann. Sheringham played in two-man strike teams for most of his Premier League career. When he was at his peak, he was a deadly and prolific centre forward, most notable for his prowess in the air, allowing him to score wonderful goals with his head and also to flick it on and set up opportunities for his partner. More on this later. As he got older and lost a few yards of pace and had a bit more mileage on the engine, his unique set of skills lent themselves to playing more of a supporting role in the two-man strike partner systems. An incredibly clever player, Sheringham's instinct allowed him to read the game superbly and his physicality and well developed upper body meant he could hold up the ball and use his close passing skill to bring his teammates into the game. This can be evidenced by his 80 odd assists in the Premier League. Sheringham had many fruitful striking partnerships during his career but one of the most legendary and productive was the one season he spent at Spurs with Germany legend Jurgen Klinsmann, the 94-95 campaign. Between them, the two plundered 51 goals with Sheringham bagging 23 of those. Klinsmann absolutely loves Sheringham and rates him as the finest striker he has ever had the pleasure to partner with. In the late 90s, the German had this to say about his one-time on-field buddy. There's only one Teddy Sheringham. We had a great relationship because we are both open-minded. His big quality is his positive attitude. How he convinces his teammates to bring out their best and how he helps everybody else on the team. Running here, running there, he seemed to be everywhere in a game. 
On the other end of the spectrum, one striker that Sheringham teamed up with at Man United doesn't have a single good word to say about the man. I'm talking of course about Andy Cole. Cole's deep hatred for Sheringham started when Teddy was still at Spurs and came about due to an incident on the international stage in 1995. A nervous and excited Cole was set to replace Sheringham in the 17th minute and make his debut for England against Uruguay. Cole's recollection of the event goes like this. I walk onto the pitch. 60,000 or so watching. Sheringham is coming off. I expect a brief handshake. Uh, good luck Coley. Something. I'm ready to shake. He snubs me. He actively snubs me. For no reason I was ever aware of then or since. He walks off. I don't even know the bloke, so he can't have any issue with me. We're fellow England players. It's my debut and he snubs me. You know what my immediate thoughts were? How many people just saw Teddy Sheringham do that to me? I was embarrassed. I was confused. And there you have it. From that moment on, I knew Sheringham was not for me. This icy intense relationship between the two was further exacerbated in 1998 when they were both turning out for United. Bolton scored against the Red Devils and Sheringham pointed the finger of blame squarely at his strike partner Cole and they never spoke a word to each other from that day on. Cole explains this odd situation. We played together for years. We scored a lot of goals. I never spoke a single word to him. People wonder how on earth we could function like that. Gary Pallister once said to me, I know you don't speak to Teddy and he doesn't speak to you but at least you play well together. We did and I wouldn't ever cast aspersions on Sheringham's talent as a top rate footballer for its clubs and country. I've just loved loved him personally for 15 years. Despite a stunning strike rate for Spurs, 98 goals and 197 appearances in all competitions, Sheringham had nothing to show for it in terms of honours and entered his 30s without a major title or trophy throughout his 15 year career to that point. This is not surprising given that he spent what many would consider to be his prime centre forward years for Spurs. I bet him and Harry Kane have a lot to talk about. To Sheringham, lovely chip! Teddy's dreams led him to seek a way out of a Spurs team who he saw as lacking ambition. So at the grand old age of 31, he joined Man United for £3.5 million in the summer of 97. He was technically signed to replace fan favourite and iconic French maverick Eric Cantona. And Cantona in there. James just got his hand to it. Cantona the draw! Big shoes to fill, certainly. Sheringham had this to say of his transfer. I want to see some domestic honours. As a youngster, you grow up dreaming of that, and now I hope to do that here. We've also got Europe, and I've never played for a club side at that level. It will be a great experience. I've joined the biggest club in England, maybe in Europe. It's come late in my career, but I'm sure I'll be up for it. Sheringham endured a difficult debut season with the Red Devils, as they ended the 97-98 season trophyless. The following season, however, would be the one in which Sheringham would write himself into football history and cement himself as a United legend. Not a regular starter or indeed prolific by any means during that season, he ended with just 5 goals and 37 appearances, he featured enough to have a Premiership winner's medal slung around his neck as United regained the title. This meant that at the age of 33, he finally had what he so craved and the reason he felt he had to leave Spurs, a major domestic honour, vindication. Not long after, he showed what he was all about, coming off the bench to net the goal which broke the deadlock in United's 2-0 FA Cup final victory over Newcastle. Trophyless Teddy all of a sudden had a double to his name. Just four days later and super sub Sheringham was at it again, replacing the struggling Jesper Blomquist to play his part in one of the all time great and memorable Champions League finals. Man United had been trailing virtually the whole game, having conceded within 10 minutes to Mario Basler free kick. For the last 10 minutes or so of normal time, United had been piling on the pressure, creating chance after chance, until with time ticking away, Sheringham scuffed the ball low into the bottom left corner to level the game. This was heading for golden goal. But with literal seconds of stoppage time remaining, David Beckham swung in a delightful corner and Sheringham showed his exceptional and intelligent aerial ability to flick the ball on with his head for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the baby-faced assassin to poke in a forever famous winning goal. The man who'd been taunted by previously adoring Spurs fans with chants of oh Teddy Teddy, he went to Man United and won fuck all, had his hands on club football's biggest prize and he was a huge reason why United had been able to get over the line and bring it home. In his final two seasons at United, he would go on to add two more Premier League titles and an Intercontinental Cup to his cabinet. With a bit spoon, Hughes, and a little touch, and they got the consolation goal, and wouldn't you know it, it is Teddy Sheringham. 
Sheringham's career and goal scoring continued on long after what anyone would consider reasonable or normal. Signing for Portsmouth on a one-year deal for the 03-04 season, Sheringham would set a record for being the oldest player to score a Premier League hat-trick, netting three against Bolton at the age of 37. For the 04-05 season, the 38-year-old decided to drop down a division to the Championship and sign for his boyhood club West Ham, and a great decision it turned out to be, as Twilight Terry enjoyed one of his highest ever goal tallies for a season, scoring 20 in the league, winning the Championship Player of the Season award and helping the Hammers get promoted to the Premiership. He would spend two more seasons with the club, eventually breaking the record for oldest Premier League outfield player, turning out in a 1-0 defeat to Man City at the grand old age of 40 and 270 days. Sheringham is one of an elite few in football to have achieved more than 700 league appearances. To sum it all up, while I don't think there is much doubt that Sheringham is a legend and hero in the eyes of those who support the clubs that he played for, I do believe that the appreciation for him is not nearly as widespread as it should be, and that when people are discussing the best English strikers of all time, well, I think his name should be a little bit higher up the list than it currently is.